What's up everybody? Time to play another round of Doki Doki. Um, the last one, I kind of, I don't know, I wasn't too keen about it. Like it just seems like it's more like just talking. I'm not really, I'm getting to know more about the girls. It's just, it's definitely not kind of gameplay that I'm used to. It's more like, here's some uh, words for you to click and all that good jazz. I'm. I'm just not used to it, so I'm hoping uh, this gets a little bit more active. Um, when I say active, I mean like I can actually like do things with my mouse to click decisions and things like that. Because I'm not getting that. Like I, I got some choices of words last time, but that's definitely not up my alley. <laughs> so hopefully uh, this game will bring some gameplay <laughs> into it but let's go ahead I love this music actually it's super freaking cute um, we'll go ahead and switch my camera and I do like how it's like beep, beep, beep. it's kind of cute but let's go ahead and load our game and we're back of course to choosing um, I do need to switch my camera again because last time it was in the way and now this time you can actually see the little girls so um these uh stickers of these girls um they jump every time i choose a word that each one is more drawn to i didn't realize that the last time i thought they were just jumping because it was just super cute you know but i guess like the more darker stuff is up yuri's alley and then the girly uh, stuff is more of Sayori but I'm still like sometimes Sayori and Nasuki they are kind of similar so I'm not I don't know but I think in order for me to have one of them like my poem more that's when I like choose the word that they more drawn to so I kind of want to like I don't know, kind of like do a test on this. Like I want to grab Yuri's attention, for example. So let's pick the words that she might be more drawn to than anyone else. So I think like variance and intellectual she'd be more drawn to maybe. So let's try intellectual. Yeah, okay, see. Let's see, shopping, melancholy, last speaker, shiny beauty, socks, flea, ribbon, insight. I think insight she might, yep. Okay, so I'm picking, I'm picking her stuff now. So let's see, essence, definitely. Anger, anime, this is different. Hopeless, oh nope, <laughs> that's definitely not Yuri. <laughs> oh well. That's okay. Agonizing. Maybe agonizing. Or even dark, yeah. Jumpy. Let's do scars. How is that? See, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Sayori apparently is... I, I don't... I don't know about Sayori. I have no idea. Let's see. Um... Probably in good trouble? Yeah, okay. Broken, definitely, or empty. I'm starting to think Sayori has some kind of issue. I don't know. I don't know. Let's do determination. Okay. Here's Adrian Tenacious. Depression. Now this is what I really don't know. Tears and depression. I'm wondering if Sayori's going to jump. Disoriented. Have that. There you go. And... Um, the clouds? Oh! Okay. Nasuki like that one. Unstable. Okay. Memories. 
Okay. Um, see, I'm trying to get just Yuri, but some of these it's understandable that Sayori and Nasuki is jumping. Misfortune. See, that that I don't understand. Um, Cage, surely. Yeah. Let's see. Tragedy? See, this is what I don't understand. Why is she jumping? There, there has to be something with her. Vivid? Yeah, okay. Music. Oh, I love music though. I don't know if she jumped to that or not. Let's do landscape. Okay, nice. Fear, of course. What? Ah, oh, man, this is different. I'll, I'll understand it maybe down the road, but right now, no. Graveyard, surely. Okay, now Yuri should like my poem even more than the other girls, I would think. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. Oh yeah, let me uh, put my webcam back down. There we go. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene meets, oh, greets me, sorry. Hi, Tay Tay. Oh, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm, I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Huh? Ah, that, that's not like you at all. I had my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Did something happen? I don't remember. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets, it, lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Oh, she doesn't have enough money. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. Nice try. I didn't realize that. Nice try. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. <laughs> Ah! I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> ah ha ha! Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Tay Tay to let me borrow some money. That's, don't get me involved in like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your, your suffering is fair enough retribution. <laughs> so she was listening. Did I just, I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I got too absorbed into my book. <laughs> ah ha ha ha. Ah ha ha ha. I don't know why I did that. I really like when you speak your mind, Yori. It doesn't happen much, but it's fun. It's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think, like... You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the rev revolution. Retribution. <laughs> that. Still coming from you, Sayori. 
I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Eehe. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Nasuki into <laughs> making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Hee <laughs> hee. Did I just slap her? Oh, out of nowhere something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! That was a a, a cookie. What the fuck? <laughs> sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my res restitution. <laughs> Retribution. <laughs> Actually, th that one almost worked. Aha! Uh -huh. I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Aha! Uh -huh. Nasuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy! After getting smacked by a cookie. <laughs> Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears uh, open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! <laughs> mm. Sayori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> <laughs> You're going through a, a lot over just one cookie. Nasuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Nasuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Goodness, girl. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Hee <laughs> hee. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind the suki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, the suki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Oh. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of the suki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouth pulls Sayori trots away to safety. Wow. This is pre-COVID, I hope. <laughs> Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Uh? Nasuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't er haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Ah? Uh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah, uh, that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music at all as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. 
I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Tay Tay. Monica smiles sweetly. I, I don't have a crush on her. She's too normal. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. Just Sayori getting a face full of cookie. Just leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. <laughs> I'm sure Nasuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Was it a big cookie or just a regular cookie? Because you can scarf that down really easily. Yuri is back to her book and Nasuki disappeared into the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a, a little bit more. At the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ugh. Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She seeks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I want to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. I know what she's doing. Just curious how come you have two copies of the same book. Ah, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I wouldn't. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well, hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Mark Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. All right. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets tar targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. So that dark turn came from nowhere. I'm not surprised. I mean, she said that she was interested in darker stuff, so... Aha! Uh -huh. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Tay Tay? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into these those things. That's because you're a dude. <laughs> She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. Of course it is. That's everybody. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals, their own 
philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. It's not a problem. <laughs> when I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. If you're just passionate about it, that's not a problem. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. Thank you. That just means you're passionate about reading. Thank you! At least our character is not stupid. <laughs> the least I can do is listen. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm liking my character, at least he's nice. It's a literature club after all. Yeah, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to. What are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. All right. It's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah! Yeah? Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. That's true, I like being in my own area, but you get used to it at school. That's been a while. <laughs> it's not a particularly bad thing, maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. Looks like she's reading from my book instead. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a lot like me. I do that with movies or games, too. Like, I, I want to watch the person uh, reading or watching or uh, gaming. Like, just how I am. It's really funny. Sorry, I, I was just... Yuri, you're really apologizing a lot, don't you? I apologize a lot, too. <laughs> I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. <laughs> She's literally like me. This is hilarious. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's. Oh, I love this. Then hold my book more between the two of them. That is so cute. I suppose so. Yuri timidly timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. There you go. That's cute. Ah. I do the same with my right arm, on the right side of the book. That way I turn the page, and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, but I'm holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. Of course it is. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Huh? Turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. Of course she did. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Th yeah, thanks. 
We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own uh, volition. Sorry. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side, and she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a little silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, <laughs> I keep noticing her eyes like switches, like from the book to me, with different uh, sections. That's kind of cool. I didn't notice that before. Well, I guess she is more blunt in a lot of ways. But she's also second guesses all of the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into her head or anything. But you're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see. You remain silent for a moment. But Tay Tay, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Now that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. I kind of got a male perspective here. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant that uh, that it's kind of cute. Ah, what are you saying all of a sudden? <laughs> okay. Okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Yuri exhales, spared uh, from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if I haven't been looking forward to this. Oh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright, I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of, of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little bit more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up and make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my page. Who should I show my poem first? I'm with Yuri, I might as well show Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri st stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Tay Tay, how did you pick up on this so quickly? I knew it. Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more Im imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Good for you. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. She doesn't really have close friends, I imagine. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Oh, The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. 
I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious uh, well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread was the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon inc increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same night that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon come, becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions into a newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pelovian conditioning. I, sorry, I don't know that word. I slice, I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Ah, there's some times where poetry is like too intense for my brain to understand. This is one of the times. Um, I was a little more daring with this one yester than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical, definitely. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I have no idea. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what that's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. That's usually a poem. I wanted to express the way it feels for, for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Tay-Tay? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if it hadn't if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. I really like Yuri. She's just a very down-to-earth person. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, the second part of this video will be uploaded soon. Love you guys, and see you later.